Okay, so here I have a CD4E valve body of a 2006. Uh, it's a Mazda Tribute, but uh, Ford Escape is the same thing. Mazda 626. There's a lot of vehicles that this uh, CD4E goes into. Uh, even though uh, Mazda would call it LA4AEL, it's still made by Ford uh, for Mazda. And here we see a Ford part number. And the build date on this is... Uh, uh, 2003 3L8F BB. I mean, that's just the uh, first digit is just a year model. We have a solenoid block integrated into this valve body. And the main issue with this valve body is it's cross leaking between the uh, torque converter clutch circuit and the uh, line pressure circuit. Uh, and what, what causes is broken bands and also the uh, forward drum. Uh, it'll break the forward drum where the snap ring goes, it just pops it out. Uh, that's the main issue. Uh, also, uh, durability of, of the friction materials. Uh, too much high pressure. I mean, it kind of scrapes off the uh, the friction of the forward clutch. And uh, sometimes you would see that the forward clutch drum is not exploded yet or blown off. But the frictions are real worn out and you, you uh, may encounter a broken band. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this. And uh, this is a very simple uh, fix to install. I mean, I, I use this uh, on every single rebuild, and uh, it does have a, a one updated valve that actually, I mean, all the shift keys I've done, I mean, hundreds of these or dozens of these transmissions, and uh, uh, with the previous version, uh, it was working pretty good. I mean, you would fix the uh, torque converter codes. That's the first codes that, uh, that will pop up uh, when you see uh, uh, cross leaks like that. High line pressure is another uh, issue. Uh, I mean, it will shift real hard through the gears, harsh engagements, forward and reverse, and uh, overdrive light flashing. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this, and then we're gonna go through uh, through whatever's included here. It's very simple to fix. Uh, one of you guys, I think it's uh, DJ Devin, asked me uh, something about this for his blog, uh, about that particular torque converter clutch code. Uh, we're gonna cover that in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this and uh, I'm gonna clean it up And then we're gonna go ahead and do the installation of, uh, of whatever is included in here. It's very simple Okay, well, let's go ahead and just start taking the, this apart most of the bolts are already loose uh, because uh, that most of the bolts is what attaches it to the to the transmission uh, itself I just loosened up these two bolts and this just uh, removes the uh, solenoid block assembly. There is a filter underneath there uh, on the solenoid block or solenoid pad. Uh, and then we have uh, two more bolts, actually three. And this will, will actually separate the top portion of the valve body. And uh, one thing to note is that this valve body does not take any check bolts. That's uh, good, I mean you don't have to keep track of them. Go ahead and uh, get all the bolts uh, away from here. We have uh, three accumulators. This accumulator uh, cover here, it takes an O-ring, it comes in the overhaul kit, but you may be just doing a shift kit just to prevent uh, damage to your transmission. Uh, so this is not included in the shift kit, it's only included in the uh, overhaul kit or the rebuild kit. All right, well, uh, now let's go ahead and take the, this uh, three bolts off. Here we'll find the detent roller and uh, the manual valve. Manual valve just comes out. Remove that. Take that bolt apart. And there we have separated all three sections of the valve body. Uh, valve body gaskets are not included either on the shift kit, so you're going to have to... Uh, Call uh, the, your local transmission part supplier and uh, get valve body gaskets for it. But here we have it. Let me go ahead and uh, just do a, a quick cleanup on this thing and uh, we'll start assembling, uh, installing that shift kit on this thing and we're going from there. Okay, so what comes in the kit? You have a uh, pressure relief valve or a pressure relief ball that goes in here with the spring. Uh, you have uh, the pressure relief uh, bushing that goes uh, underneath here. We have a uh, bypass clutch control valve and sleeve. 
here this was not included before and it was never an issue but they have included it because uh i mean it normal wear and uh a little uh plug i still have it in the bag but we are going to uh plug a hole and uh, we're going to re redirect fluid from that hole uh to uh relieve the pressure we have a big red spring a white spring big orange and a small orange spring and two clips just in case uh you lose uh, one and uh, one drill bit we're gonna need an extra drill bit uh, to drill through this uh, bottom uh, casting there uh, but this is what it comes in the kit uh, let's go ahead and uh, and start assembling this thing I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, this to the side sorry about that we're going to assemble this we already have the check ball in there with the spring and uh, we're gonna use this uh, paper clip I'm gonna see if it's gonna be possible uh, here in front of you guys on the camera. You push the uh, spring with the paper clip and you want to uh, pass through that uh, cotter pin. That's to hold your uh, spring in place, sort of like this. Now you need enough room to get your uh, paper clip out and still. Uh, get your cotter pin through like that now that you have it through then you can bend the cotter pin you bend it like this so now you have your uh, pressure relief valve highline pressure will have a place to escape uh, through this uh, hole here and it's gonna blow by out to the outside so you actually have uh, two, uh, two uh, places for the uh, highland pressure to escape. We'll go through that in a minute. Okay, first, first of all, let's go, uh, and, uh, let's go over the instruction sheet. We have an uh, adjustment washer. We install it on the servo. It's already on the transmission. I'm doing a rebuild on this uh, transmission. It's already installed. I'll show you uh, later. On the next page, on page uh, two, uh, we are going to enlarge uh, this uh, five holes with the drill bit supplied and this hole we're going to enlarge it and uh, we're going to dr uh, drill through this partition here and uh, here uh, two four accumulator remember I mentioned an o-ring uh, I am going to uh, install an o-ring here uh, because I have the overhaul kit but you can skip this step if you don't have an overhaul kit if you're just doing the shift kit itself but make sure that you buy the valve body gaskets. Um, the gasket for the solenoid block is, is it's also available separately and uh, your uh, valve body cover gasket. Okay, so we have here our new uh, TCC valve and, and bushing. Uh, this was not included before, just a spring, but now it is. Uh, and these are the instructions, uh, the rest of the instructions to do this. And here we're gonna drill two holes and this is gonna be our uh, EPC exhaust. All right, well, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to enlarge the holes on the spacer plate. One, two, three, and four on this uh, plate. Remember, there are five holes. I'm going to move this out of the way. Two. Three. And this uh, hole, we are going to uh, plug it. We have another hole over here. Okay, so that's five holes. Go ahead and uh, get our uh, blower and just blow off the chip. Anything that's left over on the bank, get rid of that. Okay, now we are going to uh, plug this hole and we're going to use this little uh, aluminum plug here. You're going to need a hard surface. Okay, so you get it in the little hole. Like that. And you have part of it sticking up like that. So we want that facing up. 
into a hard surface and then just tap it. Now we have uh, plugged this hole. I know it says that to uh, file the flush, but it is really not necessary. Uh, it doesn't interfere in anything, so you can just leave it like this. Okay, so I have this plate here, and uh, the next step is gonna be, we're gonna drill through this hole, and we're gonna come out, uh, we're gonna drill pass through this passage here. Let's go ahead and install our, uh, I have two guide pins there. There's our separator plate. And uh, that's what we're gonna, that's what we need to accomplish here. Okay, so I got those two guide plates to uh, guide that, uh, the hole, so it won't, the spacer plate won't move. Let's go ahead and drill through. That's the spacer plate. I'm gonna lift up a little bit. I don't want, I don't want to drill through my bench. There we have it. The hole is enlarged and a new exhaust poured through here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do uh, our valves here. We have our pressure regulator valve line up right here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble that. Go ahead and take our clip off. And this should come off. There you go. It'll shoot out. It's not needed anymore. But we need to uh, remove our pressure regulator valve here because we're gonna drill two holes through here and uh, we don't wanna have any uh, chips getting uh, hung up in between that valve and uh, causing it to damage. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this valve. Be back. Okay, so now that we have our pressure regulator valve removed, then uh, we get our drill and uh, start drilling. The first hole that I want to drill is a uh, is gonna go through this passage here. Let's go ahead and do that. It's right here. Drill through. Okay, and then we're gonna drill two holes here in this passage and make sure that you are on this side of the valve body not on the opposite side of the valve body because you're gonna you're gonna ruin it you want to be on this side these are the two holes that we're gonna make now Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. Okay, now that I've uh, polished and looped my bore, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drop our pressure regulator valve. Now it has a couple of lands there. There we go, all the way to the bottom. Now we're gonna install this bushing here. Push it until it bottoms out. Got stuck here for a minute. Okay, got a little stuck here, but you gotta make sure that your uh, pressure regulator valve is all the way down. But whenever you uh, drill holes like this, kind of deburr them. And uh, I think that's what's got it a little bit hung up. But there we go. We need to have enough room to uh, put our pressure relief ball plug here. So uh, I believe we're already bottomed out. Okay, now let's just make sure that our valve is okay. Yep. Okay, it goes through the bushing, the valve. So this bushing is not caught sideways. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our red spring. Get one of the new clips. Let's go ahead and uh, Install our uh, pressure relief and uh, our clip. So there we have it. We have our uh, cross drilled uh, hole here, two uh, exhaust holes here, and uh, 
this bushing is actually uh, covering this hole and uh, our pressure regulator valve. I'm not going to go through, through the hydraulics here today. I may do that later down the line. Let's go ahead and do the rest. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, do this uh, one here, the, uh, the one that takes the little uh, orange spring. Now, it is a little bit tricky to get this thing out to get to the, to the bushing itself. Or actually, to, for the uh, to get the uh, the end plug out. Once you get the end plug, everything's fine. There we go. Let's go ahead and remove uh, our spring. Our uh, isolator valve, not isolator valve, our uh, bypass clutch control. It's a little stuck in there. Which is fine, it'll come out. There we go. Coming out. There we go. It's out. So here it is. Now we install our new one, new metal one. The small spring, small orange spring, and plug, and clip. Make sure that he's all, all the way seated. There we have it. Okay, well let's go ahead and install the last two springs. Uh, this is going to be the big orange. Big orange spring. Install the spring. The plug. There we go. And our uh, retainer. Here we're going to take the white spring. There we go. White spring replaced by another white spring. Look at that. This one here. Now we uh, kind of compress the spring. Get your clip through. There we go. All right. So we have uh, installed all of our components on the on the valve body itself. We have drilled our holes. We have plugged the hole. Let's go ahead and assemble it. Okay, so we got two separator plates. We got four gaskets. We got the uh, solenoid block gaskets. Uh, you're just going to do the shift kit. This is what you need. And of course, your uh, side cover gasket or your pan gasket. Now let's go ahead and... Uh, I got two guide pins here. You can use a Phillips screwdriver that is, that's the same size as the, uh, as the bolt holes. Two of them the same. Now we uh, lay down this other, uh, the special plate and the other gasket. And here we see that this plug doesn't interfere anything. As you can see here, the gasket is, it clears the gasket and it clears the opposite end as well. We lay down our uh, main valve body. Pass it through the guide pins. Flip it over, install this uh, detent roller and the other bolt. We are guided. We're going to torque him here in a minute. Now let's go ahead and uh, the rest of the gaskets. Now you're gonna look for the form here. See which way it goes. So you got you got three holes and one with no hole. The one with no hole goes up here. There we go. Now we get the one with the three two holes and a square. Remember, there's no bolt hole right here. 
that's that's where the confusion is at and you see a bunch of holes so you'll be you'll get a little bit confused but you'll figure it out accumulator body see where the bolts got three bolts got one right here one here and one here Keep in mind, we still got the guide pins. Got our solenoid pack, solenoid block. Uh, orientation of this uh, gasket, just pay attention to it. The way it is, if you put it upside down, you're not gonna have a reverse. Uh, have one of my one of my friends that he did one and uh he couldn't figure out why, why he didn't have reverse i helped him check it out and uh, he had already changed a lot of components on it and uh, it ended up being the gasket that it was upside down pay attention to that well you know what we need to torque uh, the bolt that's underneath the solenoid pad before we do this Okay, so we got our torque wrench. Got 103 inch pounds. That should be su sufficient. Let's do 108. Let's do all of them while we're at it. This one all right solenoid pack or solenoid block the solenoid pack has two guide pins so it'll guide itself All right, we got it done. Manual valve. Need to go to the transmission and install it. There we have it. Okay, so now we install our valve body. I got you closer to the transmission, and now uh, we need to install this right here. And uh, you have the uh, this rod right here goes to uh, your shift li shifter linkage, and to install this. You have to disconnect this, or actually, I mean, you leave it on the car if you're doing it on the car, but I'm doing a rebuild here. Uh, and to uh, attach it, you just put it on there and then latch it up. There you go. It's latched up. This is where we're going to uh, latch up our uh, manual valve. Now you hold the manual valve, you have your uh, detent roller there, and we have our solenoid uh, pack connector. Go ahead and uh, get our connector through and I'm holding the manual valve with my index finger just to hold it in place and uh, we lay our valve body on the transmission like that and uh, there's three bowls that are the longest ones two go on the solenoid pack and one goes here so basically you want to guide the corner bolt first Once you're guided, you'll be okay. And if you see the shape of the bolt, it's this uh, fatter right here, so it kind of aligns the, the valve body itself. All right, let's go ahead uh, and install the rest of the bolts. I'm not tightening it up yet. I gotta torque them. All right, so there we have it. 
Okay, so I've already uh, torqued the valve body and uh, I painted some bolts in yellow. So whenever you're, uh, if you're doing this on the car for your personal car vehicle and uh, you're gonna do the installation, the ones marked in yellow are not necessary to remove so you can remove the whole valve body as, as one assembly and uh, you just remove the rest of them and the valve body should come right off. Uh, now we just need to put our uh, side cover and we're done with this unit. So I'm actually done with the uh, rebuild and uh, here's that uh, spacer washer that the shift kit was talking about uh, on the beginning of this video. So there we have it. Uh, correction uh, shift kit for a CD4E that's on a lot of vehicles. This happens to be a Mazda Tribute. Uh, could be on a Ford Escape, Mazda 626, uh, Ford Probe, uh, different other units, uh, Mercury Mystique. Uh, there's another Ford vehicle I can't remember off the top of my head. But there's a lot of vehicles that, did, that take this transmission CD4E. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, one, of, one of my viewers, uh, he had asked me about the torque converter clutch code and uh, he has a uh, forum on Mazda 66. Uh, I mean, if, uh, if he wants you, uh, if, if you want uh, people to check it out, uh, DJ Devon, you want to put the link down below. I mean, that'd be, that'd be great. Uh, but there we have it, CD4E, uh, correction shift kit that is going to correct highline pressure, broken parts, and torque converter, torque converter clutch codes, overdrive light flashing, and some other uh, problems that are associated with this unit. All right, guys. Well, my name is Harm. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and share. Thanks. Have a good one.